Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing this helicopter rotor wash effect. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jesse. I'm a visual effects artist based in Los Angeles and I've been making a lot of tutorials which you can check out on the channel. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all of the upcoming tutorials. And as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up if you guys are enjoying the content. So let's jump straight into Max. So I already have the helicopter here that I've animated like this. So it basically it's making the approach to the ground and it sort of slows down and just wobbles in place. I'm working in units, um, centimeters, and one unit is one centimeter. I could have done meters because it's a pretty large scale scene, but I didn't and it worked out pretty fine. So you just have to keep in mind how big things should be. So the helicopter is still about 18 meters long, which is what it would be in real life. Now, I don't know if any of you guys noticed, but I actually forgot to animate this back rotor here. Um, so it's not moving at all. And I actually didn't notice until I finished rendering the whole thing. So don't make the same mistake as me. Um, we can start by creating just a regular plane as our ground, just so we can have a point of reference as to how high the helicopter is from the ground here. So you should have something like this, basically. We can give it some kind of a gray material just so it's not this annoying ping. All right, so we're going to use particle flow to generate the dust on the ground. So you just go under particle systems and create a PF source. And uh, by default, it's a rectangle. So make it a circle like this. And then if you scrub the timeline, you can see that it's already generating some particles. Um, basically what we need to do is parent this um, particle system to the helicopter. So they're always in about the same place. So you can just go to the top view here and make sure that the emitter is under the helicopter where the wind would be like this. And then we can just select this. Um, I have this master dummy basically, which controls um, the helicopter. So I would just select the dummy and select the particle flow and hit all Q to isolate. And then you can parent particle flow to the dummy. And then what we need to do is go under hierarchy link info. You need to switch out of the link tool. So you just select the select tool and then you'll have this inherit. And basically the only thing that we want to inherit is the Y. So I will uncheck X, uncheck Z. We don't want any rotation and we don't want any scale. So now if I move the timeline, you can see that basically particle flow only moves on the Y in relation to the dummy, but it doesn't rotate or wobble or anything else. So this way, if I switch out of isolation mode, so now if I hit play, you can see that the particle flow emitter is moving on the Y axis along with the helicopter at all times. So now you can just hit six on your keyboard to go into the particle flow viewer. And under birth, we want to select rate and set that to 4000 and emit stop till infinity. Then under speed, we can do 1500 for speed and 500 variation. And I'm just plugging in these numbers because I've done it before. So I sort of know what should go in, but feel free to play with this. And for the direction we want to do icon center out. So already you can see that it's giving us that uh, rotor wash sort of effect, but the particles don't die. So we need to create a delete helper here and select delete by particle H and set it to lifespan 20 with maybe just a three frame variation. So you should have something that looks like this. Uh, maybe that spreads out a little too far. So maybe we can do 15. That looks a little better. And you can delete shape and um, delete rotation. So now basically we have it kind of set up except when the helicopter is in this position, the wind is going this way not not to the back. Um, so we really want to get this beautiful sort of dust wave going in the direction of the wind. Um, so the best way that I found to do it is just is to go under space warps and create a regular wind and rotate it 90 degrees in the direction in which the wind would be going. And then basically set the strength to two, go back into the particle viewer here and create a force and put it here right under display and add the wind as your force. And now you can see that already the particles are being pushed forward by the wind, which is what we need. 
So I think I would maybe even make the strength three at this point, just to push them forward a lot like this. So that's looking pretty good. And then obviously the helicopter sort of levels out. So we want the particles to stop being pushed forward. So I would just animate the wind down. So maybe this is where the helicopter starts rotating back. So I would set the strength to three, set a keyframe, then go to frame maybe 110 and set the strength to zero. Um, so just to recap, the wind strength is animated to be at value three from frame zero to frame 87 and then from frame 87 to frame 109 it's animated back to zero um, So at this point, it's basically evenly spreading. So let me just play it one time and um, Basically, this is what you guys should have right now if you're following the tutorial or something like this All right, the next step would be to go under helpers Phoenix and create a PHX source and just select the particle flow particles as your source for the smoke. We can turn off temperature, leave smoke at one, and then we need to enable this motion velocity. This way the smoke will inherit the velocity of the particles, which is a crucial step here in order for this dust wave to form and continue moving forward. So basically the higher the number, um, the faster will the dust move in the direction of the particles here. So that's something to play with. Uh, and after several tests, I ended up settling at 80, which is a really high value. By default, it's one, and one is usually enough to get you nice results, but I really wanted something violent like this. So 80 ended up working pretty well. So I'm not gonna do it right now, but I wanted to remind you guys that you can enable RGB and put a texture map here. And this way you could have a variety of colors in the dust. So you could maybe mix darker dust with lighter dust to get some more realistic results. And I've already made tutorials for this. So just so you know, that's something that you can do if you would like. So outgoing velocity, I ended up leaving at 10. And then the smoke, I actually lowered to 0.5 just because there was a little too much smoke being generated. And you don't need that much, especially because we're going for this light dust um, that shouldn't be too thick. So 0.5 ended up giving me this kind of a result. Okay, at this point we can just create the actual Phoenix grid. So just go under Phoenix, Fire and Smoke Sim and um, drag out a grid that should comfortably cover the entire area like this, especially the beginning of the simulation. So it maybe move it back here. And then we need to go under grid and set the, leave the walls at open and then adaptive grid set to smoke with a point 0.01 threshold is good. So basically if the smoke um, thickness, so to speak, reaches over this threshold, the grid will expand. I have found that if you leave it at the default value, it sometimes still gets clipped. So you wanna keep this value pretty low. So as you can see, the resolution right now is insanely high. We have some um, 55 billion, I believe it is, um, particles. So just raise the cell size way up until you're at about 5 million total cells. And um, you know, this is a pretty low resolution, but the camera is really far away. So you actually don't need as much resolution as you might think to make something like this look pretty good. And also remember that the grid will keep expanding a lot. The dust really goes you know, forward a lot and to the side. So I ended up, I mean, I started with about 5 million and I ended up at about 60 million cells by the time the simulation was over and that was just for these 100 frames here so it can get really slow really fast so don't overdo it with the resolution definitely start low so actually i found that i was getting better results if the smoke was interacting with the wall of the simulator rather than with a geometry plane so you can go under z and set it on jammed minus which means that the bottom will act as a solid wall and then you can click on the plane go to Ob phoenix fd properties and make it not a solid object and you can right click again object properties make it not renderable so for the smoke buoyancy you can you can do a slightly negative value so minus 0.3 should be good and this will just keep the smoke from rising way too high for massive vorticity i did 0.5 for smoke surface so this will just add a lot of that small detail here and make the dust look really violent and make it break up more. So you could actually raise this up even higher. 
and for the large scale I put it to 0.1 because we actually don't really want this to look very large scale at all and then for the quality I believe I did about 30 um, just to get some nicer swirls and steps per frame I ended up having to do four um, just because the particles I mean the particle flow particles are moving really fast and Phoenix really wasn't catching up um, with capturing all of the detail and the speed so I ended up having to do four steps per frame and then under output you can check RGB if you're doing colored dust you can check velocity if you would like motion blur I rendered um, the helicopter with motion blur but the dust without motion blur just so that it wouldn't take too long to render but it is something that you can do and then just select where you want to simulate this into under preview you can enable the GPU preview and we can just run the sim for a few frames to make sure everything's working alright so immediately upon starting the simulation I got a warning that the simulation will be affected by this wind which by default Phoenix will be affected by any standard 3ds Max force that you create so you need to go under scene interaction select exclude and select the wind so this way the dust will not be affected by the wind um, which may sound counterintuitive but in reality I just want the particles that are generating the dust to be affected by the wind and then the dust will take on the velocity of the particles I can still add extra wind on top of that to make the dust maybe go to the side or continue forward if I would like um, but I didn't do that in this case alright so I ran the same just for a few frames and everything is running smooth so we can go under rendering volumetric options and here under smoke color we can just give it some kind of an orangey desaturated sort of dust um, color this is completely up to you so I found that lighter colors definitely work better for the dust so maybe something like that and then you can go under smoke opacity and actually lower the opacity a lot I left it at almost zero I really was going for that sort of almost transparent the light passing through you know these shadows in here kind of look so keep the opacity pretty low now by the time the simulation is over the viewport is probably gonna get really really slow so you can go under preview and under detail reduction you can raise this up which will just kill a lot of the detail but make it much faster to preview the simulation so at this point if you have everything set up I would say um, set the resolution pretty low and just simulate a few frames to make sure everything's working then you can raise the resolution and let it sim maybe overnight and now let's pretend that your simulation is done and we just want to render this out so what I did was I went under V-Ray in the creation tab and create a V-Ray plane and we can just give the V-Ray plane some kind of a um, dark ground material like this and then you can go under lights V-Ray and create a V-Ray sun and just drag that out like this um, I don't want to create the sky map so I'm just gonna click no and you can raise this up roughly where you would like your sun to be and then you can go under rendering environment um, and under exposure control just give it a standard V-Ray exposure control which is the quickest way to get something that looks pretty good without getting blown out and now you just need to create a standard camera so you can just do control C and we'll create a camera and then under the settings you can say enable motion blur remember that Phoenix doesn't have the velocity channel exported which means that you cannot render this with motion blur if you want motion blur you need to export velocity so that's just something to know go under my render settings and for something like this I would just do bucket you can just do one minimum subdiv two maximum subdivs and a thousand for the light cache um, it is definitely noisy but it was enough just to get this preview out to you guys um, then you can just raise these numbers to get some nicer rendering result alright so I render just a quick frame everything is working fine obviously you could just make the ground a lighter color and um, and I just brought it into After Effects after I rendered it out and added some contrast um, played with the saturation just to get the nice dust color here and that was about it it's really a very simple setup 
Um, the most painful thing about this is that you just have to wait for it to sim through. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you're new to Phoenix FD and some of this stuff seems confusing to you, then be sure to watch some of my earlier tutorials for beginners to get up to speed. Also, if you're following the tutorials start to finish, I would absolutely love to see your results. So DM me or in, on Instagram or just let me know in the comments and I would love to see what you guys did with what I'm teaching you. As always, thanks very much for watching and I'll talk to you later.